let me tell you a little secret. I fail all the time and I learned to love it. Let's start with a powerful idea that everybody is failing and as a result you are in a great company. In this video, I'll help you, junior software developer, an experienced software developer, or you want to get into tech, I'll help you to change the way you think about failure. In today's video, we'll cover understanding failure, failure cycle, the types of failure, how to distinguish good versus bad failure, and how to develop yourself through failure in software engineering. And I'll also finish with a failure quote. You can change how you think about failure and as a result to improve and ensure that failure leads to your progress. In reality, failure is normal and it's necessary. Your growth as a person and a tech professional has a lot to do how you react to failure and any setbacks that you encounter in your day-to-day -day job and your journey. Sadly, for many people, failure is associated with a negative outcome and it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of people don't want to think about their failures and God forbid for other people to learn about them. And that's sad because that, that, that experience, that failure is actually the key to their success. So what do the successful people have in common? They go through a failure cycle and the failure cycle is try, fail, learn, succeed. And between trial and fail, it can be as many times fail, get up and continue until you find another way to accomplish what you're trying to do. Uh, business people, entrepreneurs, technical people, they all have this failure cycle. They all go through it. The successful people follow the same pattern. Try, fail, learn, succeed. Those people don't feel ashamed or embarrassed that they produced good work. Work that was not, that is not great yet because they, they, they know that they are at the beginning of a learning curve. And instead, they have the desire to continue to grow fast and learn as soon as possible to get over that learning curve and have this achievement as soon as possible. And I believe the secret is that you can learn to love the process, the process of failing and discovering as much as the joy of discovery, the joy of achievement. You should be loving the process that you have the challenges because that's what is enabling you to discover and move on. And if you try one technique, a new language that you're learning and you, you don't understand something, work with it, play with it. And eventually you will get past it and you will feel so great once you figure it out. When you truly embrace this process, the benefits can be tremendous. For example, you become resilient to these challenges and these setbacks. And as a software engineer, a technical person, you know that you have a lot of setbacks. When you get a project, you never know A to Z what you have to do. You have to figure out everything. So as a first step, you have to break it down into small pieces and figure out as you go. There's no way you can know everything and succeed from the first try. And if you do, you're playing it way too safe. And my recommendation is at least try to, to take a little bit of risks. The result might surprise you. As I said, you become resilient to these failures that are a normal aspect of the engineering, software engineering process. Meanwhile, you will experience less and less embarrassment with failure and you will stop being afraid of failure. And as a result, you will take more risks and you will learn more and you will, your progress will be way faster than just playing it safe. So you become more resilient in the face of challenge. And in my opinion, any software developer who is truly wanting to progress and be a great software engineer, a software craftsman, really should love challenges and challenges are never easy. You gain expertise much faster and you become a smarter risk taker. And that's an advantage that any 
technical person should have. All of these things that we just mentioned will increase the odds of you succeeding in an industry like tech, which is growing rapidly and is changing constantly. So there is no way that something that you learned five years ago will be relevant year after year, year after year. So you have to be able to take new challenges, learn new things and explore, take risks and take risks smartly. And the goal is not to achieve success. The goal is to develop a mind and mentality conditions that will help you succeed. Allow me to ask you something. When was the last time you did something challenging, really challenging? If it's easy for you to answer this, that means you're playing way too safe. Therefore, you are wasting your potential. And don't forget, next time when you fail, you're on a great company. And now it's your turn to use this failure cycle, or let me call it differently, success cycle, to something that will make you and less and less until you are resilient to it and you actually start to enjoy. So we all love to celebrate success, but not so much failure. And, and it started from early on. It starts with our education system. From the time you're a child and you go to school, you are trained to be happy about grades that are high and not so much the low grades to fear them, to avoid them. And the same is true in a sports game. Let's say if we are talking about football, right? One team is winning and the other one is losing. So everybody is cheering for the winners and the losers, they don't, nobody wants to be a loser. So it's everywhere. That's the, the society part of it, right? And I'll encourage you to think about success and failure differently. It depends how you define it. I would suggest to think about success as a, a success in a specific area, right? It might be you got, you successfully ran a race, your first 5k, or you got a promotion. So that is just a specific area. It doesn't make you successful in everything, right? It's just a specific area. And the same is true about failure. If you failed in one thing, it doesn't mean that you're a loser in everything. So it's a, it's a specific setback for that you should look at this from a higher level you are the average of all the events that happen in your life so if you look at everything that you went through and you failed you failed you failed and at a certain point you succeeded well overall the process was that you got to the point of success and that's kind of the point right take the average of all your experiences and to the point that I brought earlier, failure is not a result of people not believing in themselves, a lack of self-confidence. No, as I mentioned, it's part of the society. It starts in school, it starts to us celebrating uh, winning and not so much losing. A better choice at looking at success and failure is to take a step back look at the bigger picture and see what you learn, what was in the process that you enjoyed the most and what you will do differently next time. You have to view yourself as a result of all those experiences that you had instead of only one data point. You have to remember that that's part of a bigger picture. It's just one piece in the huge puzzle. In reality, failure could potentially be painful and we all want to avoid pain, but that doesn't define you. When you give failure too much importance and let you define like a label, instead of letting it ignite you to learn and experience new things, you start a predictable failure cycle. You avoid failing, you avoid dealing with it, when it, it does happen, all the failures pile up in your mind and they heavily press, causing you a cognitive burden and you finally can have a, a breakdown and you start asking your worth. So it's a domino effect. Now I'll tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. You are in charge of how you react, how you deal with failure and the reality, everything starts with you. From this moment, you can change the way you think about failure and how you react. And you can change the relationship that you have with failure. You only have to remember one key thing, that failure is key to success and is normal and necessary, total necessary. Obviously, there are different types of failure. There are 
good failure and there is bad failure. And I would like to propose you three different types of failure. First one is personal error. Second one is external factors. And the third one is striving effects. And obviously the first and, and the second one are the ones that are bad ones and the good one is the last one. So the first one is when somebody just doesn't care, it's not experienced enough, doesn't have necessary resources to succeed. This is a kind of error that everybody should avoid. The second one, the external factors, is something that is outside of our control. It might be something that you're working on a project and you do everything and suddenly something changed, the customer changed their mind, they are shutting the project down and so on. So you don't have control over that one. And the last one, the striving effects. It's a good kind of failure and it's the most interesting one and it should be the one that we all follow and that is the, the one that is a result of us trying to innovate, change and improve. And it can happen in two different ways. One is pioneering. When you're trying to do something that hasn't been done before, you try to explore a new territory. So you're taking risks. And in essence, it's something to demonstrate your new idea, your new concept. So you're deviating from norm, you're trying something new that is essential to learning. But sometimes it can hurt. It can result in a massive setback. And the second type is pushing your limits. Uh, it's simple as your team wants to get something done faster. Turn around the, the cycle, um, have an, a future implemented instead of two weeks in, in a week. So you're trying to pass your limits. You try to break all the barriers that are keeping you from delivering something in, in a more challenging way. So both of these striving failures, the pushing your limits and the pioneering are the result of a great learning curve. But sometimes you know that this may be challenging. It's hard to engage into this. It takes a lot of effort it, because it's risky, first of all. You see, the system is set up to discourage this in, mul in multiple ways. For instance, if we are talking about performance review, at least in the companies I've worked so far, they're always focusing on measuring your success your short-term success. They are not looking at the bigger picture of what was accomplished over time. And that can be discouraging. We talked about the psychology of failures, different kinds of failures, and the cycle of failure or success, success cycle, right? So we got to a point where I would like to wrap up and give you some ideas or suggestions what to do. The most important one is practice. Practice is a controlled failure. You are getting to your limit. You cannot develop getting to your limit. You don't understand that until you get to a point where your mind is making the shift between being confused and understanding it. And suddenly you're able to implement something or suddenly you know something that before it was scary and you didn't know how to do. Maybe you were do you know a design pattern, let's say an observable pattern was confusing you? If you practice that uh, specific thing that is confusing you over and over and over, you get to a point where you start to understand and your mind makes the shifts and sees the concept in a different way because it understood, it learned all the challenges that it had. And what is failure in reality? Failure is actually helping you understand and identify the areas where you need to pay more attention, where you need to learn and practice more. So the advice here is to fail fast, fail often and fail quick. Imagine that Bill Gates would have stopped at the setback that he had with his first business. Today, we won't have Microsoft and all the other business units that are part of it and all the products that Microsoft developed. If you're a person who doesn't like failure, like anybody of us, and you cannot deal with it, it's something that causes you a lot of pain and you want to avoid it as much as you can, then tech industry, software engineering, that's probably not the job for you, not the career for you, because that's just the way software engineering is. You get a lot of challenges, a lot of risk taking that you have to do. Just naturally, 
you will face failures. And there I'm talking about the good kind of failures, the one that you can control. So if that is something that discourages you, I'm sorry to say that's not the field for you. You should choose another industry, another path in your life that will bring you joy. For me, actually, I get frustrated every time I I hit a setback or when I fail on something and it's not a good feeling. I won't discount the feeling there at all. But the moment I get to solving something, it's, it's something that I cannot describe the feeling. You have to experience it. And I hope that a lot of you get that reward after trying different things, getting to a point where you achieve it and you actually should celebrate it. Software engineering, you know that a lot of times of what we are doing like 99% of what we're doing, we try something, it fails, we try again, it fails. And 1% when something works, we get to the point where the product works. At that time, you are checking it in. So if you look over time, 99% of what we're doing as software developers, it's failing. And only 1% is succeeding. And that actually 1% it's more than this 99% of failure. It weights so much more. It's such a great accomplishment when you get something done and makes, I, for me, it makes the day better. It makes the week, the year, and whatever, depending on what I achieved um, at that time. Allow me to bring another point here. In an interview, Thomas Edison was asked, how did you feel failing a thousand times? And he replied, no, I didn't fail a thousand times. In reality, I found a thousand different ways to make something that will not work. And that's what we're doing as software developers. We are trying something, it doesn't work. We tried something else, it doesn't work at Then we scratch our head, we go for a walk, we go for a run or have a cup of coffee. And then when another idea comes up to mind, we sit down at our computers and we try that and maybe partially works, maybe completely works, everything works. To summarize that, practically 99% of software engineering is failing and 1% is actually succeeding and checking in that or committing it, depending what kind of source control system you have. So yeah, failure is natural part of a software developer life. And every time you try something new, something does not, does not work, a new idea, you actually grow. You're actually exploring new things. You challenge yourself, discovering new ways of solving one problem. And at the same time, you are exercising your character. You're developing your personality and you're developing yourself as a software professional. And you're training yourself to have a growth mindset versus a set mindset. And to succeed as a software developer, you have to innovate because in the modern world, we know that technology evolves so fast. So you need to be able to innovate. In order to innovate, you need to take risks. You do not learn by following rules. You learn by doing and by falling over. I hope that you found some valuable information in this video and, and I will really appreciate if you leave your thoughts below, any suggestions that you have, or let me know how you deal with failure in your current position.